the crowd. Drawn out project management processes. There are 47 processes in the fifth edition of the PIMBOK. And here is an explanation of one of them. Sequence activities. Now in this process, the inputs to sequence activities, well, one is going to be the plans, and most specifically, the scheduling or the schedule management plan, which of course is how are we going to deal with the schedule and, and its management of it. But also, two, most importantly, your project scope statement, which is essentially saying what is the objective of this project. So we're going to have the inputs of our environment, so your enterprise environmental factors definitely come into play because how we do things here affects how this project is going to sequence activities. Also, if you have any policies, procedures, things like that, those are your organizational process assets. Maybe you have templates that you follow or use to help you sequence. <clears throat> Beyond that, too, we have the activity list, which of course are the activities that we need to schedule, and the various attributes that go along with our activities and things that we might need to know, like who is it, um, where are they happening to perform the work or expect it to, and anything that might uh, assist us in our scheduling of the activities. And also, too, we can use the milestone list that we also created to help us figure out when these should or should not happen, and those might have some dependencies that affect. And the tools and techniques of sequencing the activities of the project vary. <clears throat> Most common or, or the essential piece is your precedence diagramming method, which might be is simply explained as what comes first, what order should they go in, and trying to diagram however you might do it, but if I'm essentially how do I put these in some kind of order. But we also have to think about the dependencies between them. Some things are hard-coded together where that one thing has to happen after or before another, and some things are just discretionary or we think this is the way it should go. We can also use the techniques of some slack or float or what we call leads and lags in a project and the, the amount of time it takes. Now the outputs obviously should be uh, our scheduled diagrams, our, our findings of how these activities should be sequenced, and so that would be our project schedule network diagrams, as well as any updates to the project. So if we figure, well, somebody else has to do it, so that's going to change the documentation in HR, or maybe how we communicate. There's so many different project documents that can be updated because of our sequencing. And that is a quick look at the sequence activities.